The sun had long since fallen out of the sky by the time Josh finished giving Kyle the scoop on Fractal's Define Nano S. Kyle gave his familiar nod of approval as he admired his friend's work, fighting the urge to flail his arms like a marionette on speed, which had long been his trademark. Actually, he kind of nailed you there. You know, whatever. Where do the drives go in this thing? They're back here. Flushed with emotion, they stared longingly into each other's eyes. I, what, the, 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 the emotion? Longingly? There was no longingly. Okay, let's let's just try to... Yeah, right. I mean, okay. So, what else can we stuff in this thing? No! Kyle's Freudian no. slip betrayed his true emotions, his heart taking over for his mind. Choose your own adventure with the Define Nano S from Fractal Design. The case offers custom water cooling options, full-size hardware support, and top-class cable management in a compact design. Click the link in the description for more info. What's up, guys? So this is my first review since returning home from Computex in Taiwan, and may I just say it is so nice to be talking to you from an air-conditioned room in the United States, despite the country's primary election results thus far. This video also marks my first review of NVIDIA's new GTX 1070, specifically the gaming X8G model from the nice people over at MSI. By now, we're all aware of the GTX 1080's processing prowess, but if you don't have the six or 700 bones to shell out for Team Green's flagship card, the GTX 1070 is still really fast, but stays competitively priced with an MSRP of 380 bucks for a custom model like the Gaming X, or $450 for the reference Founders Edition. And as we'll see in the benchmarks, the price to performance here positions the 1070 as an attractive sweet spot for mainstream gamers running 1080 or 1440 displays. Of course, GPUs rocking in Nvidia's Pascal architecture will also have access to new exclusive technologies such as SMP, GPU Boost 3.0, and Ansel. Check out my GTX 1080 review if you want more deets on those technologies. Now, if you're watching this video, the first round of 1070 offerings have already hit the market and are now available for purchase. Although, if this is news to you, they're probably all sold out by now, so for those of you who missed your first chance to snag one of these suckers, perhaps you'll find some solace by living vicariously through me as we conduct this review. Out of the box, MSI has dialed in a factory overclock about 100 megahertz higher than reference speeds, with an alleged boost clock of 1797 megahertz. However, without any tweaking, GPU boost took the card to just a hair shy of 2 gigahertz, which, needless to say, impressed me more than it did wifey sauce. The 1070 uses the same GP104 GPU as the GTX 1080, but it's been cut down a bit with fewer CUDA cores and 8 gigs of GDDR5 memory as opposed to GDDR5X. Being the slower card also brings the TDP down to just 150 watts, and that goes for both the reference 1070 and today's aftermarket version, according to the manufacturer's website. With the arrival of Pascal, MSI has also rolled out their latest twin Frozer 6 cooler, which in theory should provide improved acoustics and thermals over the last generation. The cooler features a newly patented Torx 2.0 fan technology that generates 22% more airflow using steeper curved blades and the power of teamwork. Now that's cute and all, but when will we be able to hit aggressive overclocks using good deeds? Like we've seen in the past, the 100mm fans only spin up once the GPU hits 60 degrees Celsius, promoting silent operation under light workloads. The open shroud rests above the heatsink and heat pipes and uses a slightly different mold from what we've seen in the last generation, sticking with a red and black color scheme but adding a more textured surface this time around with some red LED accents. There's also a familiar RGB LED backlit logo at the front, and both lighting regions can be disabled or independently configured to display different effects within the MSI gaming app. While I do like the aesthetic of this card, it would be nice to see a color neutral cooler from MSI with full RGB LEDs to improve color compatibility with any system build. I'm just saying, this card seems a little racist. For additional power delivery and OC stability, a 6-pin PCIe connector has been added to the reference 8-pin plug, indicating a custom PCB on this card, which is reinforced by a sleek metal backplate. Display I.O. stays true to reference spec with one dual-link DVI, three DisplayPort 1.4, and one HDMI 2.0b. For testing, I ran the card at its factory overclock speed and ran it once again after pushing it manually to see just how much juice we could squeeze out of the cut-down GP104. After some quick tuning, our GTX 1070 hit 2151 megahertz megahertz and stayed at a reasonable 70 degrees Celsius throughout our tests. Eating up just over 6 gigs of VRAM, it didn't seem long ago when an 8 gig frame buffer was considered total overkill, so it's nice to see games utilizing more memory as the capacity increases with each generation. I'm also happy to report that the twin Frozer 6 stays very quiet under load, and here's a quick sound test to back it up.
all applications were run on my X99 testbed with a 5960X at 4400 megahertz and 16 gigs of DDR4 on Windows 10 using the latest drivers. Games were tested at 1080, 1440, and 4K. On that note, I will finally shut the hell up for a minute so we can see how the GTX 1070 stacks up with a look at the benchmarks. So there you guys have it. Pretty impressive numbers all around. What we can gather from these results is that the GTX 1070's performance is positioned somewhere between the 980 Ti and the GTX 1080, which is an incredible feat considering the 1070 is launching at 58% of the price of the 980 Ti's original MSRP. Obviously, the struggle is real at 4K, but max settings at 1440 and below is a walk in the park. The overclocking results here were a tad lackluster, though I'd imagine this is due to the card already coming with a hefty overclock out of the box. Admittingly, I could have also spent some more time tweaking the voltage or using OC Scanner to cop a few extra frames. Still, from what I can deduce, the GTX 1070 is the new top choice when it comes to price to performance, and MSI has done a bang up job presenting this GPU with their Gaming X lineup. But what do you guys think? Are you planning on picking up a GTX 1070, or are you holding out perhaps for something like AMD's RX 480? Before you guys go, don't forget to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and feel free to check the description below for an awesome sauce shirt, or bookmark my Amazon affiliate link and use it when you buy stuff, it helps me a lot. As always, I'm Kyle with Awesome Sauce Network, thank you guys for watching, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next video.